So our first group. These are the bread molds. Before we do talk specifically about zygomycota, there is one more thing I'd like to tell you about the fungi in general. And that's about their nutrition. So the fungal nutrition. Almost all of these organisms, well, certainly in the hyphal, mycelial fungi, The organisms are absorptive heterotropes. So heterotropes, of course, means other feeding. These are heterotropic organisms or organisms like us that need an organic source of carbon, and that has to be taken into the body somehow. For us, in our cases, and all mammals are ingestive heterotropes, that is, we actually take things in through some kind of a, in the amoebas and things like that through a food vacuole and us through our digestive system. The fungi are absorptive heterotropes. What that means is that they do their digestion or most of their digestion outside of the organism, not inside of it. So they secrete enzymes into their environment and then they take in the partially digested materials in a liquid form. And they don't do that in vacuoles, but they do that directly across the cell membrane. So all of the mycelial fungi, fungi including the zygomycota, uh, are some type of absorptive heterotropes, and they can also be saprobic. Often are saprobic. That means that they feed on decaying matter. So a parasitic organism feeds on a living plant or animal, a saprobic organism feeds on a decaying plant or animal. And so most of these guys are going to feed on decaying ant plants, although they are, can be important decomposition agents for dead animals also. But we're going to see them all on plants. Here's some of the zygomycota growing on bread. So a saprobic organism, or sometimes also weak parasites. By weak parasites, we mean they do not necessarily, they don't kill their host organism. The host organism will survive and will reproduce, continue its life, continue the generations. But if, for instance, if it is a agricultural crop, it, the output, agricultural output will be harmed. Sometimes if it's a bad infestation, it will be drastically harmed. So absorptive heterotropes, saprobic or weak parasites are very common of these kinds of absorptive heterotropes. In the plasmodial fungi, we have ingestive heterotropes. Mainly, I don't want to say completely ingestive, but mainly ingestive heterotropes. So these guys will treat on bacteria, for instance. So they will engulf bacteria. And you'll see later on what we mean by this when you understand the structure of the organisms, how that might work in these plasmodial fungi. So they're going to take in through food vacuoles. But the zygomycota then, that's one of the, these are the mycelial fungi, one of the mycelial fungi. And these are the black bread molds. You see it growing on a loaf of bread. You know what zygo means? The yolk. It's usually a root for the gamete. So there's going to be something unusual about the gamete or the zygote in this condition. It's actually about the zygote and the gametes are very unusual in this, so unusual that someone has named the whole division after them. And mycota, of course, is the division ending for the fungi. Here we are in our grouping. The zygomycota here, 
Here it is as a class, Zygomycetes. The organisms that we're going to be dealing with are Rhizopus and Polobulus. Rhizopus mainly is the black bed mold. Rhizopus is the black, med mold, black, bed, black bread mold, and it is the organism we're mainly going to be dealing with. And then at the very end, we will talk about Polobulus. Characteristics of the zygomycota, there are no flagellated cells. Should be no surprise, there's no flagellated cells anywhere in the fungi. So that means we've got to have some kind of reproduction, <clears throat> that cellular re sexual reproduction, and in this case, it's going to be by conjugation. So it's going to be conjugation of two, well now, what is it, those two things that are going to fuse in this case? And the structure, as we're going to see, is it's a little strange, and so they are sometimes called gametangia, or they are sometimes called gametes. <clears throat> so they are structures that could be interpreted either way, and either name we are going to accept on exams or things if we ever ask you questions like that when we talk about them. So the reproductive structures are gametes or gametangia. They form, when they form, they form a zygote. But the zygote also has a very strange structure, and so that zygote is sometimes called a zygosporangium and sometimes called a zygospore. I'll write the zygote here, but I'm going to put zygote in quotes because we don't usually use the term zygote in this group because the structure is going to be so strange. <clears throat> well, these guys have strange structures. The gametangia are strange and the zygosporangium is strange because of this next fact. This organism, as I've already said, is siphonous and cebacidic. So no, the, <clears throat> the hyphae have no internal partitions and they have multiple nuclei in them, just long tubes. And here they are. This is a typical structure. What would you see on those, growing on those breads? <clears throat> At the top here and here, we have sporangia. These are asexual. Producing our asexual spores. So we could call those mitospores or eplanospores. We have no flagella. And it's these black spores, these black sporangia, <coughs> that give the, give the organism its black color. So when you see the black on the black bread mold, that are these sporangia. So you can see, because it's got this black color growing on the bread, you get a sense of how many spores are being produced. Asexual reproduction by these aplanospores is incredibly important to these organisms. It's the major way in which they reproduce. Now, this is an organism growing on, a, some, on an auger plate, and the level of the auger would be about there. <clears throat> so that the ba at the base, there is the mycelium, and the mycelium mainly consists of rhizoids. Rhize means root. Oid is like. <clears throat> so they're not true roots. True roots would have a vascular system, occur in the higher plants, etc. These are hyphae. They just look a little bit like roots if you look at them under the microscope like that. <clears throat> so that's a sim very simple vegetative part of the organism. Here it is growing on some bread. Nice drawing up here. There's our rhizoids growing into the bread. There are these little runners, they're called stolons, doesn't matter for us, but they run between. And here's our sporangia. So this picture is really, this is just shows you why you are so lucky to have taken this class, because 
I can tell you now that if you see a bread like this, you should not eat it. <laughs> Before this class, you might not have known. That's black bread mold. It hasn't completely ripened yet. It's going to turn black the next stage, and it's going to start shedding spores. So that's at a stage kind of like the sporangia are kind of like this. Whoops, that's a shed sporangium. Maybe like this one, they're not quite fully <clears throat> ripe yet. They'll, they'll turn black. That whole thing will be covered and start shedding spores. And you see why if you get a piece of bread like that in your kitchen, you kind of got to clean every place because you're covered with spores now. Yep. The whole surfaces are covered with these spores, even though you don't see them. Here's what you'll see in the lab. We'll have slides very much like this. Here's the sporangia. Here are the eight final spores. And here they are being shed. These are the stalks, of course, and we could we could name make a special name for those. There are special names for them, but we won't worry about that now. You got the basic idea of the structure. Let's turn to the life cycle of the organism and look at those strange gametes or whatever they are, and the zygo, whatever it is that we've got here, and understand why we've got these terms, whatever they are. So we've got, here's our rhizoids. And you can see that there are mating strains, plus and minus mating strains. And we get these, we're just not going to worry about the word pro here, the gametangia forming. They first form as these little bulbs, and then these two separate Gametangia. Or gametes form. And we can call them either one. And those are going to fuse. Now, why are we using two different terms here for it? Well, a gamete is usually a unicellular structure. It's got a single nucleus. It can be mobile or not and it fuses with another gamete, which is a unicellular structure with a single nucleus. These guys are not unicellular. I mean, well, they are unicellular, but they're multinuclear. So I guess they're unicellular. You see, we have problems describing them already. They are multinuclear structures, and they are haploid nuclei. And so somebody looks at that and they say, oh, those are gametangia because of the haploid nuclei. And someone says, look at them and says, well, gametangia don't fuse with each other. Gametes fuse with each other. And so because they fuse with each other, we'll call them gametes. So either one is OK for us, just as long as you understand what their structure is. They fuse and they form a zygospore. Or we can also call that a zygosporangium. So the zygospore, the zygosporangium, is going to be after we have plasmogamy and periogamy. They both occur together. So we could call it syngamy. But it's a weird kind of syngamy now, right? Because we've got these two structures coming together, and we've got There's our two gametangia. Can't seem to draw that one. I give up.
and that's going to form then our zygosporangium and initially we have our different gametes in there, our different nuclei in there. But very quickly we get Can you see that that's a different color? Not really. Hard to find a good color for this. Probably that doesn't look any different either. I will just write a note and that will say diploid nuclei. That doesn't show up at all. You're right. I will write that in white. Thank you for the tip. So do the clay fuse? Yep, they fuse in that zygosporangium, and here we have haploid nuclei. And so this that's our process of syndemy. And we could divide it into those two stages, plasmogamy, the fusion of the outer cell walls there, and then the fusion of the nuclei. But they occur, in this organism, they occur very close together in time. So we just say it's syndemy, and that gives us this state here where we have these diploid nuclei in our zygospore or our zygosporangium. That's it. So the haploid nuclei is the result of spore germination, right? The haploid nuclei is the result of spore germination? Is that why you wrote it right there? No, I'm, this has got an arrow up here. Okay. Up to there. We haven't talked about this lower part yet. So we're just, we're still on this stage. We're talking about this stage right here. And we elaborated that stage over here. It does. That is, that is, well, yeah. You could put it through there. I was trying to indicate with that, but you could, you could do it like that. Yep. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, so we're now at the stage of zygospore, zygosporangium. It's multinucleate and diploid. Nuclei are here diploid. In the gametes, it was multinuclear and haploid. Now it's multinuclear and diploid. And now we get meiosis. So I wish I could do this in another color. Let's try red. Meiosis. So meiosis is current occurring, and now we're getting haploid nuclei again, and it's going to germinate. The zygospore is going to germinate and produce haploid hyphae. And that gives us our new mycelium, which is haploid. So it's pretty weird. Nothing compared to where we're going, fungi, but weird enough. Multinucleate gametes, haploid. Multinucleate zygosporangium, or zygospore, diploid nuclei in that case. Meiosis occurs in that thing, and so we're back to haploid nuclei now, but it's the next generation. It's back on the other part of the life cycle now after meiosis, the haploid portion, and now new filaments grow out haploid. 
That's the life cycle of rhizomes. Kind of hard to do that in our in the traditional way that we've been drawing life cycles. Here's the process again. Here's our rhizoids. We would say that's the pro gamma tangier. We're not going to label them. Here's the pro just means before. And this here, here's the gamma tangier. Or the gametes. And now we've got two stages of the zygospore, a young one or an old one, and an older one. So let's, just to remind ourselves what's going on here, we'll say here, this is, ha this is the zygospore with diploid nuclei. And this one we'll call the zygospore or the zygosporangium with haploid. This is after meiosis now. So that means this is after meiosis. Okay, so we could label those either way. We're just trying to remind, I'm just trying to use this as a, as a memory device. Right, so that we have, first of all, dip, syndrome occurs, you get diploid nuclei, meiosis occurs, it looks the same at first, and we get haploid nuclei, and then out of this, we're going to get our new hyphae grow. So there's our new haploid hyphae, which will come out of that. Here's the zygospore. This is likely what we're going to be photographing in lab next week. Zygospore or the zygosporangium. Here's a young one over here. These are the these are the mature ones. We may actually have meiosis occurring in those big dark ones already. Here's the life cycle according to Raven et al. They've got this called fertilization down here, which Whatever it is, it's probably not fertilization. I don't think that's a good term. We'll call it syngamy. Meiosis, where is meiosis? Well, here's the germinating, here's meiosis. It says meiosis during germination. I've got it in the zygospore. Anyway, there's meiosis. We'll put that there. There's our line dividing this into the haploid, uh, sorry, the diploid down here and the haploid up here. So this is all asexual reproduction. They've drawn it as usual in the life cycle. And then they've just shown really the asexual reproduction is going on all through here. They just don't show the spores there and they show the rhizoids coming out. Here's our two young rhizoids producing those little blips, and our gamma tangia, young zygosporangium, 2N, mature zygosporangium, and in this, in this area, someplace in there, is where meiosis is taking place. Right there. So, monobionic haploid or monobionic diploid? monobionic haploid, the main portion here, with some strange things going on. It's going to be impossible in the next organisms to say whether it's monobionic haploid or diploid. Polobolus, the second genus we'll look at. This is a cool genus for 
a couple reasons. One is the organism itself is really neat. So first of all, the life cycle of Pelobolus is exactly the same as Rhizopus. Nothing new about the life cycle, nothing really new about the feeding um, mechanisms, except where it grows and how it disperses its spores. So how, where it grows and how it disperses its spores are related, and they're both really neat. This is the sporangium. And this is a hydraulic pressure chamber. That's going to shoot the sporangium off. This is auger down here, of course, but this auger is a substitute for dung. So this organism grows on dung. It grows on cow dung, especially in fields. If you all, own, if you all are from a farm, I want you to go out there and look for this next time you're out in the field, because we don't have any in the lab, and we'd love to see some in the lab next week. So go home and look at the dung. Inspect that dung. If you are an organism like this that grows out, that grows on dung and takes its nutrients from the dung, the best place for you to go is on the dung and where, how can you be assured that you're going to end up in a nice pile of dung? What is the most, I mean, just no chance that you would end up any place except in that dung. How do you do that? How would you get in the dung? 100% chance. Get eaten by a cow, which means you come out of the backside of the cow with the dung, and there you are in heaven. How do you, now if you're growing on the dung, cows don't eat dung a lot, very often. I've never noticed a cow, and I'm not a farmer though, you know. I don't think they eat dung very often, and so if you're growing on the dung, you've got a problem because you've got to get from that dung into the cow so that you can come out on the dung. On the dung. And that's what this hydraulic chamber does. These things, when they're ripe, will shoot those sporangia off. Not only do they shoot the sporangia off, but they track the sun. And that's really cool because if they're tracking the sun, right, the sun is not usually there. It's usually low at some point. More often than not, it's low. And so it's at an, that means the sporangium sits out at an angle, and it shoots it off, and so it shoots it off as a trajectory. Up. And so we get then, there's our sporangia tracking the sun, ready to shoot those little black dots, the sporangia, off. And here we just see them developing. This is the sporangia up here at a very young stage. And we've got another picture of them, two more pictures of them. So there's our hydraulic chamber. The young sporangium. And now looking up, here's some of those spores. They're actually, here we have the spores. Something ended, but this is still going, so we're okay. So I want to show you what this looks like. We've actually got a video, and let's see if I can get the audio hooked up. Notice they use the technical term for dung, cow poop. <laughs> so there's a group, there's a dance group called Pelobolus. If you don't know them, this is them. There are no props. These are all people. All that is doing that are human bodies. It's an ad. 
So if you ever have a chance to see Palobolus, you should, this Palo, either Palobolus. Go look at the, go look at the cow poop or go see Palobolus, either one. <laughs>